Hello and welcome to MHA Digital Communities. My name's Katie and today I'm going to show you how to make some beautiful Mexican decorative crafts. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw a beautiful Mexican alebrije pescado, which means fish in Spanish. This is what the outcome will be like, but before we get onto this finished piece, I'm going to show you some techniques. These are really, really easy to do and only need a few simple materials. So I'm just going to talk through the materials that you need to use. Um, first of all, you'll just need regular biro. I've got a red and a blue one. I've got a pencil and a rubber. So the most inexpensive coffee granules are absolutely fine and we're going to be able to mix those up with water to make a lovely ink. We've got, I've just got this as a little uh, palette to use for my paint, but you could use a plate or even an ice cube tray is quite useful if you don't have that or a paper cup, that's absolutely fine. And then I've got, um, I've got this, I'm using this really as a ruler. It doesn't have to be a triangle, just any plastic ruler is fine. I just quite like this one because I can hold it quite easily. Um, oh, and a plate is really useful for drawing circle shapes. Um, we'll be using that to help draw the fish. I've got a little bit of blue uh, Parker ink here. Um, if any of you ever used ink pens, this is the ink. Um, you don't have to have this ink. You could use food colouring or if you've got some watercolours, you could use those. It doesn't have to be expensive, it can just be regular blue food colouring or blue, blue paint, um, just quite thin. Um, I've also got a little bit of just normal table salt, which can also be used for an interesting effect. We may not get around to using that straight away, but we'll, we'll get started. So initially to start with, um, I've got just a, a small round, th round tool that I'm going to draw around, but you could draw around anything, the bottom of a cup or a jar. And I'm just going to draw a couple of different circles on my page. So I'm just using my pencil. They don't have to be as large as this, they could be smaller, but for now we'll just have those four. It just helps you to have a shape to draw, to experiment inside. Um, okay, so we're going to start off first of all by doing this, what I call ruler drawing technique. And I'm going to use a biro. And I'm going to use my ruler. And essentially with this technique, all you need to be able to do is move your ruler along and draw a straight line. It's as simple as that. Um, so I'm going to just start off at the edge of my circle. And what you're aiming to do is basically to draw a straight line from one edge of the shape to the other edge of the shape. like that. Now depending on how close together you draw your lines, you will get the illusion of different effects. So this is obviously creating a layer of colour and because the lines are quite close together, it kind of visually it kind of merges so you get to see an overall kind of area of blue. If I was to put my lines further apart, then the effect would be different, but the overall effect is that it's actually a much lighter area. So, so it's the tone of it, which is how light or dark it is, and it's also the texture. And I could go back into here now and just fill in some smaller lines. There's something quite therapeutic about the repetitive nature of doing something like this can be quite relaxing and obviously you haven't got to worry about 
you know, um, keeping the line straight because the ruler does this for you. So you can just concentrate on basically moving along. Um, and that's just single lines. If we were to then turn the, the ruler across and go across like this, we're starting to get what's called cross hatching. And uh, if you've heard of that word before, you may have heard of that word before, but cross hatching is obviously just turning this around so I can just be going this way, it's a little easier. Cross hatching is a drawing technique that you will have possibly heard of, but again, that allows you to create this woven effect. So a lot of these uh, artesanias, these Mexican crafts, definitely, and anything to do with pattern obviously involves repetition of textures and patterns and colors. And now I'm going to try this, but with another color. So I'm going to try with a green biro, and I'm going to go diagonally across So although this green is about the same, um, it's still quite a dark green, so there isn't a massive contrast between the green and the blue, you can still see a slightly different colour and you can see how that's changing the whole look of it as you build it up. And you can keep building up the layers on something like that to create all these different effects. Um, the more different types of lines you include or sections of different types of lines and textures, the more interesting and detailed that your drawing will look. And the whole thing about these Mexican artesanias is um, really about the use, the use of pattern, finding a way to use pattern and colour in an interesting way. Um, this ruler technique is a technique that different illustrators and artists use and I've just started to combine it with, um, with, with the Mexican um, alebrije fish. Um, and if you look at the fish itself, obviously it is actually hand carved, so you can see you can see these areas where it's been carving. So the actual use of lines marries up really with the way that this has been created in a way. Okay, so that's kind of one experiment that we've done there. Um, you could then move on to the next circle and try a slightly different experiment. Um, with your pen. I'm just going to start off again going with the blue pen for now. So once you get used to doing this you can actually go a little bit faster. So within this shape I'm going to just experiment with having some different lines at different angles. So the reason I'm getting you to practice doing these lines at different angles is so that when we eventually get onto the fish, it'll make sense to kind of, you'll, you'll look at it and think, oh, I could, I could put my lines going that way, or I could put my lines going that in different directions. So it's good to just try that out and see how that looks, see if you like the effect. So in a way, the, cir the circle is your frame, and then you're just inventing some different shapes within your frame. Obviously when you're choosing the ruler, if you can, if you can get hold of a ruler that's um, see-through, clear plastic, it's a lot better because you can see the design underneath. It doesn't have to be, but it is just a, a lot easier. So I'm just starting to experiment really with getting this slight, almost like a woven effect. And I'm just changing the angle of my shapes, kind of moving them around. I'm just gonna leave that one at that. For this next one, uh, I'm just gonna try something slightly different where I'm actually just going to freehand draw lots of loops, so I'm doing a looped texture, have a little bit of a change from the stripes. So if you can imagine the, the craftspeople that were carving and making these 
um, colourful alabrijes, it would be, you know, something that would be done actually in a workshop. There'd probably be quite a few people making different versions of this and each person will have their own signature design. So you'd have sometimes different scenes. So this is a scene of people um, in mountains, like collecting, gathering food, collecting food from the fields. And then this one, you've got like a beautiful feathered bird. So I'm just going along really just doing circles inside circles it doesn't have to be neat or anything like that i'm just going along mine are quite small circles yours could be bigger but again the nice thing about this is when you get these uh, overlaps so you start to build up the texture like that and in many ways actually this does look quite fish scaly and watery doesn't it so we've got another experiment there and then we're going to um, just try actually drawing uh, a specific kind of shape for this one because on on the fish that we're going to be doing I've got a, a few little elements of landscape so we've got some little kind of flowers they could be like cactuses with little flowers on the top and then we've got shapes that look like mountains here and then we've obviously got a sun a sunbeam coming out there so we're just going to practice doing a few of those so I'm going to use the swirly lines as my kind of base So obviously in England, if you have a cactus as a plant, it's usually, you know, relatively small. But in Mexico, if you have a, a cactus that grows outside, it's probably going to be like 20 feet high. So very, very dramatic plants they are. So I'm going to pretend this is like a cactus. And then I'm going to, cactuses actually flower sometimes, maybe once a year. There might be some that only flower less frequently, but we can just add some kind of flower at the top there like that. Okay, so we've got a little element of, of a landscape that we can put in. Um, I might just put in this area that looks like a mountainy area and just show you how I've done the mountains on the fish on here which is basically just lines going in two directions. So I've done the tips of the mountains. I've just put a line there, done a wobbly line like that. Tips of the mountains. are going horizontally. So if you get really nifty at doing this ruler work, you might find, you know, you can just move the ruler as you're moving it, but you might, you might not feel confident doing that yet, but you can just go along and do that. Okay, so we've got the tips of the mountains and then we're just going to have, I'm just going to have some diagonal lines. When I get to the flowers, obviously I don't necessarily want to go over them, so I might just fill in a little bit in the gap. And as you can see, I'm doing the really fancy technique where I'm just like doing both. I'm now kind of scribbling. It's actually quite enjoyable doing this one. Like that. Looks, actually looks a little bit like falling rain, so could be that. Doesn't rain, doesn't rain that much in Mexico, but when it does rain, it really rains and it rains at three o'clock in the afternoon and then it's finished after half an hour, so happy days. Okay, so we've got our three biro experiments there. Um, and then we can start to play a little bit with the coffee mixture. So I'm going to take the lid off the coffee and I'm going to tip out just a tiny little bit. I would say that's probably half a, a quarter of a teaspoon, a third of a teaspoon. And then I'm going to add, hopefully you like the smell of coffee, I do. I'm going to add a little bit of water and you can see the coffee's obviously gradually dissolving in there. I'm just going to pour, I'm going to try that again, but this time I'm going to add a really, really small amount of water. Um, you could do that using a paintbrush, you could just drip it in. 
I'm going to use a little pipette, but you don't have to have one of those, but I'm going to use a little pipette just to drop a few drops like that. So you can sort of see the difference between a bigger amount of coffee and a, and a smaller amount of water, etc. Um, I'm just going to use the pipette to just kind of mix that up. So effectively, one of these is quite thick. You can see it's slightly thicker and gloopy. If I run it up the side, you can see it's sticking and one of them is more watery. And one's just going to be a lot more opaque and one's going to be more transparent. I can always take a little bit of that one, put it in there, and I can add a little bit more water. And so I've got some different shades there if I want to have different shades. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that there. Right, and now the fun part. And to get my paintbrush, you can use any old paintbrush, um, as long as it's just kind of like a, a smallish size so you can control it. Um, so I'm going to start off and I'm going to use the thinnest mixture that I've got here. And you could just practice out of the shapes if you want to, just to kind of see what that looks like. You can see that's got a see-through appearance and then it, where it gathers a little bit more, it's darker. If I go to the slightly thicker one, let's just see if that's a bit darker. Yes, it should be, like that, not that much darker. Right, if we go to the last one, yep, you can see that's a much richer shade, and again, you could even strengthen that by adding a little bit more. So I'm just gonna give that a little rinse, just go with the pale one for now. And as you're working, it's quite nice because it gives you, so I'm just gonna start off, and I'm just using it over the biro, so you can see it just gives it a really lovely, almost like a sepia tone, a sepia tone, it's like a warm color. And obviously, because we've got blue on there, you get a slight, um, what I'd call like a visual effect really. It's kind of like mixing with the color that's already there. So I'm just using a thin layer I'm going to shade that in, like that. Oops. And what's nice is if you do like the smell of coffee, while you're working, you, it starts to waft, you start to get, you know, maybe you need to go and get a coffee and do it, do it at the same time. Um, if I use the darker shade, just along one edge, oops, there's a little bit of thread there, let's move that. Get this kind of slightly 3D effect. I'm just going to leave some of it there so you can see how it looked before that. Um, I'm going to go for the really much darker shade here and just see how that works. So I'm, I'm pressing my brush right down. This is a what's called a hog hair brush, the, the, so the bristles are, are quite sort of stiff, they don't splay out everywhere, so it's quite good to control it. If you don't have a brush, you could even use something like a little piece of sponge. That would still work. I'm just going to use a slightly paler one. So this is, in a way, you, just all about using the materials that you have at hand rather than having to have expensive art materials. And once it dries, you can then apply secondary layers so you can actually let it dry and you can make it darker, you can work over the top. Um, so that's some, a couple of techniques using the coffee there. Obviously, you, just, you can see the kind of effect you get. If I take, um, I didn't use the green bar on these, but obviously, if you have a different colored bar, I'm just going to, without the ruler, just quickly do some there. The colour of biro will obviously then mix with the colour of the coffee. So if you've got, for example, on this one, I've used a red, you can see actually when you mix the two, you get this kind of quite nice coppery bronzy colour because the red is the underlying colour on it. And whereas with the blue, it, it tends to look, I don't know, slightly greenish, I would say. Um, every, everyone's perception of colour is slightly different anyway. So people have very different tastes in colour. So. For this one here, I'm just going to use the dark shade on the mountains here, just if I want something darker. Shade that background in. And obviously you, you can bring in 
you know, other co colours of paint, but I'm just showing you how to use this particular material here. I'm just going to do a very, a very light shade, or you could just, you know, leave that in blue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you want to try some other experiments, you can always do things like use your brush on its side to create little brush shape, shape marks. That can be quite nice. And again, you know, you just need to let it dry. Um, I could add a lot more coffee to there and see if I can make almost like a, like a quite thick, gloopy, oily paste. Little bits of sticking, that's all right. Yeah, so you can see that's actually a lot thicker. You can see the brush marks. And you can see this one that's already dried. It's sort of super subtle. Um, and you can see how you can layer it as well. So. If you use a blue biro and then you use this quite dark shade, you've got two colors that are complementary you know, hot and a cold, it's quite nice. And obviously with these kinds of, just these two little materials, so a biro, the coffee and the water, you could go on experimenting quite a lot. You could, you could really, there's endless experiments that you could try, but it just gives you something it's always good when you're doing arty things to not have too much choice. So if you keep it quite narrow, it actually helps you to focus um, and not be overwhelmed with too many colors, too many shapes, too many choices. I was going to leave that one on its own, but I'm just gonna go across there and just see, see like that. You can do something where you grab a little bit of coffee and you just powder it down and kind of layer the powder. So you can get little effects like that. But obviously that's taking it to, to another level of experimentation. We see need a little tissue to wipe your hands, but you can, can do that. So we we'll just kind of leave that to dry now. So, and now we've experimented with these techniques. On the next video, we're going to put it into practice. Mm -hmm.